This is how my office sounds with no acoustic treatment. And this is how my office sounds with the new acoustic panels. Hey folks, Nick Corbettson here, and I just finished making some acoustic panels for my office. Just hung them up. I'll show you a clip of what they look like. Now, before I put these up, in the short term, I just had a mattress up against the wall. And while the mattress did a good job of blocking the sound, it didn't have the best aesthetic. It kind of looked like I was always in the process of moving. So I did what you do whenever we want to do something. I turned to YouTube and I searched for making my own panels. I found this video. I'm not going to regurgitate what is in this video. I recommend once you get to the construction of your panels, watch this video. This dude's stuff was great. Even like he talked about how to make perfect corners. Well, there's the perfect corner. But the reason I'm making this video is because I wanted to talk about the materials that I used. Most tutorials out there are most interested in trying to keep costs down. Well, I was more interested in trying to have these panels be eco-friendly and safe. Now in your house for insulation, you have either fiberglass or rock wool. In the tutorial I pointed to, this gentleman used rock wool and there's some debate over the safety of rock wool. If I was 100% confident that it was safe, then I would just have used it in these. It's certainly cheaper. You can pick up all the stuff at Lowe's. But whenever you're installing it, they recommend that you're wearing a face mask because those particles can start going around. You can start breathing them. Well, I'm going to be sitting in this office like all the time, so I don't, I don't want to be breathing that stuff. I want to make sure that's something good. And now I'll share the link with this. This is where I found these cotton bats. Two bats per panel. This is in the U.S. I'm hoping that you can find alternatives wherever you live. You do have to pay for shipping, which does make the cost a little bit higher. But if you think about how long you're actually going to be using these things, then that cost is pretty negligible. These cotton bats are made of mostly recycled cotton. It's hard to have a company be totally transparent about everything that goes into them. Like, I'm sure there might be some kind of spray adhesive. But they also say not to use these products in something that needs to be fire rated, which means these haven't been sprayed with flame retardants that are going to be off-gassing in your office. So, this is what the panels cost. They're certainly cheaper than purchasing your own, but they are not the cheapest on the market because I've seen videos of people doing them like for $20 or $5. But again, I'm less concerned about the cost and more concerned about having something that is non-toxic. And that's why I was just more comfortable with this approach. So let me just tell you the materials that I used. For the wood frame, I used spruce wood because it cost a little bit less than pine. It was untreated and I actually had them cut it at Lowe's. This is a good thing because all I have is a jigsaw at home and it's hard for me to do a straight cut. Only problem is I didn't cut them to the right size. Also, while I was in the hardware store, I needed to pick up some screws. I just wanted a box of screws. They have an entire aisle of screws, all different size screws, wood screws, wall screws. It was like screw paradise. <laughs> I got these wood screws and my review is they work. This is the wire that I use for the backing. A lot of these were already sitting around the house from other projects. The fabric on the outside of the panels is also from the ATS company. It is a nice burlap. It's not sprayed with any kind of flame retardants, but it does kind of have a strong burlap smell. So if you don't like that, then you can let it air out for a little while before hanging them up. But I love it. I cut them to the size that I'd seen in the video and these bats, these cotton bats, are a little bit larger. So you wanna make sure that your insert area, the area inside of the wood, is 48 by 24 inches. So to do that, you would have two pieces of wood that are 48 inches and two that are 24 plus the width of two boards, since those ones are sitting on top. Now the pieces that connect the top are gonna vary in size because the thickness of boards can be different. In my case, I made them to the exact specifications of the gentleman's video, and so I had to cram my cotton bats in there and sort of fold them over on the sides. Because of this, I think there is a little bit of pooching. A little pooching is happening on my panels, but that's okay. I, again, I'm more concerned with the safety and them doing the job than I am the aesthetics. And honestly, I don't think they turned out too bad. Here's one of the panels. This is one of the smaller ones I made. I wrapped it in burlap. I used the dude's little corner technique that worked really well. And I had run out of backing fabric at this point, so I had to do uh, fold over some of the burlap on itself. Then for the hangers, I just put two screws in on the side and used some wire. I have some wire over there. Uh, and this just holds it up with a screw on the wall. And as you can see, they work really well. Ah! So let's talk about what I did wrong. Well, I was eager to get these things made and I didn't want to make another trip to the hardware store. So when it came time to start assembling these after I got the parts, uh, this is the tool I use for assembly. Just a regular old pink stapler. And so for each of the staples, I would put it on here and I'd bang the back of it. But I think it's a nice metaphor for how I do a lot of things. You know, sometimes the tool you have is the right tool for the job. 
Look, I'm not trying to win a merit badge with these things. I just wanted them to work. I'm trying to have some panels that are safe, that look nice, and do the job of blocking sound. And now I can focus on creating more content, more music, without having a giant hulking mattress here in the corner of my office. All right, now for the score sheet, the things that I did right and wrong for this project. Uh, one, I used the wrong tools. <laughs> hey! And two, I didn't measure before, so I got the wood cut the wrong size. Fortunately, these bats are pretty squishy, so I was able to maneuver them to get them in there, but I think having it the perfect size would have been better. But what I did right, I feel like I used the right material for the job, and I did a heck of a job on those corners. Look at that corner. So I hope this video has been helpful if you were looking for green materials for your project. And yes, they do work. I mean, this room just sounds like a racquetball court when I don't have anything up. You get all the sound of a racquetball court, but without the benefit of being able to play actual racquetball. All right, folks, so once it gets to the assembly time, once again, go check out that other video. If you want to see more content I'm working on, then check out my channel, where hopefully you will hear less echo in the future. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you acoustic panelers next time.